My brothers and sisters in Christ, today's readings present a continuation of the theme I've talked about this week, of the before and after of the apostles as we see them in the Gospels, and then after Pentecost in the Acts of the Apostles. And so, in the first reading, we see the, the high point, if you will, of the transformation of Peter, and the fact that not only is the transformed Peter now preaching in the name of Jesus, not only is he performing miracles, but now, that most fabulous miracle of all, he has raised the dead. And so, Peter has become literally the presence of Christ to those who he ministers to. They, they look upon him as others did Christ, because Christ is fully reigning in Peter. And so when this happens, when Christ is fully present in Peter and Peter in him, then Peter can go forth. God can do amazing things in Peter. We contrast this to what we see in the gospel, the kind of sad note of the bread of life discourse in John chapter 6, where people turn away. They reject the, the teaching. They reject Jesus that he can give his flesh and blood for them. And so Jesus turns sadly to his apostles and asks, do you two want to leave? And Peter, in one of his moments of great insight, says, to whom else shall we go? Will you have the words of eternal life? In fact, Jesus is the word of eternal life. And so even though the apostles themselves don't understand this teaching of Jesus, they recognize that there is something there in Jesus that cannot be found anywhere else. They sense that life is found there. All the other roads lead to death, to emptiness, and yet Jesus leads to life. Now, all that's missing is to put the trust and to truly follow him. And that's where it gets challenging. Because so often, we can say that we are followers of Jesus. Like, Peter, you have the words of eternal life. Yes, Lord, I'm a Christian. I follow you. But do we follow him all the way? When we don't understand the ways of God, when we don't understand the ways of his grace, his providence, when things astound us, what do we do? When we don't understand a teaching, what do we do? When we are utterly confounded, confused, lost, what do we do? When God asks us to do something outside our comfort zone, what do we do? In fact, this is the great challenge for us to go from the Peter uh, of John chapter 6 to the Peter who is literally raising the dead. It's the fullness of trust to say, okay, I'm your follower, but more than that, I fully embrace you. I want you to reign in me. I want you to abide in me. I want to abide in you. And once you reign in me mightily, I go where you go, because you, Lord, have the words of eternal life. You, Lord, are the word of eternal life. I need nothing else. I want nothing else. Whatever you say goes. This is the path we must walk in the season of Easter, the place of that complete surrender to divine providence, that great trust to place in him, that in him we have found the word of eternal life, and then therefore to whom else would we ever go? May God bless you all. Mm -hmm.